Welcome along to the second video in our tutorial series where we are creating ourselves a 3D model of a scooter. In the first video we made a tyre and in this video today we're going to be making the wheel that goes inside that tyre. Okay, looks something like this. doesn't have to be hot pink. I just chose hot pink so I think it's a pretty cool looking colour. Okay, you can choose whatever colour you want for yours but the design is going to look something just like that. Alright, so to get started on making this you need to go to the file menu up the top make yourself a new document, metric template and a standard millimetre part. When you're ready make a new 2D sketch and we're going to start sketching today on the XZ plane which is our base plane. We're simply going to draw a circle that's 70 mils in, so in diameter. Sorry, You'll need to zoom out a little bit to see all of that. Once you've drawn it, finish the sketch and I want you to extrude it a distance of 24 millimeters. And before you press OK, zoom out a little bit here, I want you to change these options here from direction 1 over to the symmetric option. Okay, and it basically extrudes up and below that center line. You can click OK. It's going to come in handy a little bit later on. All right. Okay, once you've done that, what we're going to do next is just flip it over a little bit so we can see this top surface. And we're going to draw another sketch on this top surface. What we are going to draw in particular are these holes. Okay, so it's a bit of a repetitive pattern that goes around the outside of our wheel. Okay, so to draw those holes into our wheel, just need to start another 2D sketch and click on the top face of the wheel. From here, we're just going to draw a little shape in the top left. Okay, don't worry about the size of these lines or the position of them exactly right now, just get them similar to mine. So I'm going to draw one line going like that, press escape, and then grab the line tool again and draw a second line that goes like that. So that's the start of our shape, two lines. Next thing we need to do is grab the arc tool and connect these lines. So I'm going to start in the top left and click, come across to the top right and click, and then just move my mouse up until I get a bit of an arc, and click once more to finish that arc off. Do the same down the bottom, click on the corner, click on, whoops, I don't think I clicked on the corner then, I'll just redo that arc. Make sure you're clicking right on the corners. Your mouse cursor should have a little green circle under it when you're right on the corners. And with that bottom one, just make another little arc like so. And press escape when you're done, so you turn the line tool off or the arc tool off. You should be left with a shape that looks like this. Now to get our shape dimensioned properly, what we need to do is draw a few construction lines in. So I'm going to click on the line tool at the top here and turn on construction lines to help with our uh, help with our drawing. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this bottom corner of our shape, click and drag down to the center point of the circle. Okay, still there, we're going to come up and we're going to connect to the other corner of that shape. So we've got two construction lines here now, one going to the center there and one going to the center there. We'll draw one final construction line, so grab your line tool again. It's going to start right from that center point, the origin. Click and drag directly up. 180 degrees or 90 degrees and simply click up the top of the circle. Press escape and you'll see now you've got a line that runs straight along the center there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Three construction lines. With those construction lines in place now we can start to put some constraints into this shape and get it to the right size. So the first constraints we're going to put in are called collinear constraints. And up here you've got a whole bunch of different constraints you can put in. And the collinear constraint is the second option there. It's like a little arrow pointing to two lines. What we're going to do is get these two lines that run down the side of our shape to pretty much run directly towards the center of that circle. And the way we do it is we simply just click once on this side, once on this construction line. And now this side of our shape is running directly towards the center of our circle. Do the same up here for this one. So with the collinear constraint still collect, uh, selected, click on this side of the shape and click on this construction line down here. Okay, and you can press escape. You can see both of those lines now on the side of this shape are running directly towards the center of our circle. So that's looking good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get these arcs here to match the outside of our wheel. Okay, so this arc running around here. And the way we do that is we grab these little circles here. It's a co concentric constraint. So what we need to do, once you turn that on, is click on the outer circle once and click on this outer arc 
once. Okay, and then we'll do the bottom arc and click on the outer circle again. And we've now got the outer circle here of our wheel matching these two arcs. All right, you can press escape and turn off your concentric constraints. What we might do now, um, we might dimension a bit of this shape. So grab your dimension tool and we're going to grab this side of the shape. And we're going to dimension it to this construction line. You might need to just zoom out a little bit so you can see this a bit clearer. The size we want to make that is 55 mil, so press enter. Okay, with the dimension tool still selected, we're going to click on this right hand side of our shape. Also click on this construction line in the center. And we're going to come out here. Make sure you're over this side of the angle, not this big side. We just want this smaller angle. And I want you to type in 30 and press enter. Okay, and we've now got our shape looking like that. So make sure your shape's looking something similar to mine. Not finished just yet, so we'll keep on rolling. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just make sure you press escape and turn your dimension tool off. Down here with your three construction lines, you can delete this middle one now. Okay, so click on it once and just press delete and it should disappear. So you're going to be left with just two construction lines now. The next constraint we want to make is this first one up here. Okay, if you hover over it, it will say coincident constraint. Alright, so if we click on that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the bottom right corner. Not the sides, we want that corner of our little shape. Okay, once we've clicked on the corner, we're going to go back over to this middle line and click on the construction line in the middle. And that makes that right hand corner attach itself to that construction line or down the middle of that circle. Okay, just a couple more dimensions to whack in now and we're done with this shape. So grab your dimension tool and we're going to dimension this outer part of the arc. So just click once on that top section of the arc. Let's drag up the top somewhere and the size of it, it needs to be 30 millimeters. We'll press enter. Then we're going to do this bottom section, dimension that bottom arc. It needs to be 20 millimeters and press enter. And you're going to be left with a shape that looks like that. That's the final shape we need for this sketch. Okay, so make sure yours is looking something similar to that. And you've got dimensions like I do. Okay, once you're done, finish the sketch off. That will bring you back around into our 3D view. What we're going to do now is just um, extrude that shape. We don't want it to go up. We want it to cut down on itself. And we want to choose the distance as all. So it cuts all the way through that wheel. Click OK and you'll see now that you've got a hole running straight through your wheel. Just to get rid of the sharpness on these edges, what I'm going to do is um, just fillet them a little bit. So I'm going to go up to the fillet option up the top here to smooth these edges out. The radius of my fillet, um, so I might just leave it at 2mm, that should be fine. Where it's got zero selected, you might need to click on that. And what I want you to go do, I'll zoom in a bit here so you can see this, is click on the inside edges. Of this shape. There's four of them that you need to get. You can see them filleting away in there. And that just smooths out the edges and makes a bit more of a rounded rectangle, I guess. Click OK once you've got that. And you should have a shape looking like that. Okay, so make sure you get those inside edges filleted nicely. Next thing we want to do is get this shape that we've cut out and repeat it around the outside of our wheel in a circular pattern, I guess. And there's an option in Inventor that allows us to do that. So at the top in your pattern tab here, the one that's in the shape of a circle is the circular pattern. So click on that. The first option here asks you what features you want to put into this pattern. We want to get this shape and we want to get the filleted edges. So you need to click twice. Once on the shape, once on the filleted edges. And that selects it and turns it blue. Down in the next section where it says rotation axis. Okay, you just want to click on the outer part of the circle and you'll get a preview of how that pattern's going to look now. And that looks good to me. So if you're happy with it, just press OK and that's going to chop out six different circles for you. Okay, so now you've got this nice repetitive pattern that goes around our wheel. So that's looking really good. Next thing I'm going to do is going to put a hole on this top face so that our axle can spin. Uh, where our wheel can spin, sorry. So we're going to go up the top and choose the hole feature. 
Okay, and with the hole feature, I want you to click on this top face where we want to put the hole. Doesn't matter where you click for now, we're going to change that in just a moment. Now the size of the hole, just here, needs to be 22 millimeters. Okay, so type in 22 and press, whoops, I shouldn't have pressed enter then. I'll just do that one more time. Click back on this face. So we've got a 22 mil hole. Don't press enter yet. Okay, we're not quite finished. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to reference one here. Click on that arrow and click the outer part of the circle. And that's just going to position our circle right in the center of the wheel. Okay, and the last thing I want you to make sure it's turned on, the termination should be through all. So it cuts all the way through our wheel. Once you've got that, click OK and you'll see you've got a nice circle now that runs straight through our wheel. Plenty of room for the axle to roll through. Our next step is to just add a little bit more to this circle um, cut that's going on in the center of our wheel here. So I'm going to start another 2D sketch and just click on this top face again. Okay. On the top face, we're simply going to draw another circle. It comes out of the center origin there, and it's going to be 30 millimeters in size. Press Enter. There's the blue circle. Finish your sketch. Extrude that shape for me. And we're going to bring it back on itself to cut. And the distance needs to be just 10 millimeters. You can click OK. And what that's done is just cut out a little bit more of that center circle. If you flip it around, though, you can't see that appearing on the other side. And I want that same effect from there to appear over this side. So we're going to mirror that effect. Okay, it's quite easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up the top here into our pattern section of the ribbon and you'll see this mirror option. You just need to click on that. Okay, for the features, you just need to select that part there or extrusion number three from your browser. Okay, it should highlight blue once you've got it selected. Okay, for the mirror plane, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our origin folder here and we're going to select the XZ plane. Okay, it should look something like that if you flip it around. It's the one that cuts straight through the middle of the wheel. All right, and we should be all good now to click on OK. And if we have a look this side, we've got that cut in the center. Looks good. If we flip around the other side, we've now got the same cut that's been mirrored. Okay, so that same effect is on both sides of the center circle. So that's looking good. We're nearly finished now. I just want to put a bit of a groove on this inside section as well, on the, uh, on the wheel. It's going to make it look a little bit nicer. The way we do that is we're going to go over to our origin folder here in our browser. We're going to select the XY plane. Okay, it's that one that runs through the middle like that. So with the XY plane selected, oops, what you can do is start a new 2D sketch. Okay, and that's going to allow us to draw onto that plane. Um, I'm just going to flip this around so it's looking like that. And I'm going to go up the top here. Yours probably says project, uh, project geometry at the moment. What I want to do is select project cut edges and you're going to get these yellow lines appearing okay might look a little bit different from mine might look the same but as long as you get some yellow lines there you know you've done the right thing okay with uh, that's still in the sketch mode we're going to go up to our view tab in the ribbon and we're going to change our visual style to a wireframe okay and you're going to see straight through the wheel now you can see some of these yellow lines with some of the cuts that we've made all I need you to do here is go to the sketch tab and grab the line tool and what I want you to do is start about this point on the left hand side and I want you to click once and I want you to come straight across to about there okay I'll just press escape so you should be able to see if you should be able to see that line there. It doesn't go quite to the edge there. It doesn't go quite to the edge there. It's just inside those edges. There's no set size that you need for this, but you just need it about that length. Okay, once you've got that line drawn, what we're going to do is connect it with an arc. Just a little one. So we're going to grab the arc tool up the top here. Hover over the start point. Hover over that end point and click. And just drag up and the size you want to type in the box is 15 mil and press enter and you'll end up with an arc looking just like that 
Okay, if you've got that and you've done it right, so what we're going to do is finish that sketch. And I'm just going to change the view. Oh, actually, no, I'll leave the view like this for a moment. Swing it around a bit. You might be able to use your cube to swing it around. You want to be able to see that little arc. So something like that. What we're going to do now is revolve that arc. And it's going to cut away a little bit of the uh, wheel for us. So if you grab revolve, okay, the first thing you need to do is go and select that arc. And just that arc. It should highlight blue once you've got it selected. Alright, for the axis over here, click on the axis. And I want you to choose the Y axis from your browser. It's inside your origin folder if you can't see it. So you select the Y axis. And over here, we don't want the join option selected. That adds to our wheel. We actually want to cut away from our wheel. So choose this section, second option that allows us to cut away from the wheel. Once you've got that, you can click OK. Now to see this a bit clearer on what's happened, go up to the view menu again and change your visual style. You can either choose realistic, shaded, or shaded with edges, it doesn't matter. It will pretty much look the same. Now this side's our flat side. Okay, nothing has changed, but if we swing it around, you'll see a bit of a groove appearing now in our wheel. Okay, it's this one here. If you look on the other side, we don't have that. But around here, we do. We're going to repeat that effect on the other side in just a moment anyway. Okay, so flat side, side with a groove. Alrighty, so to get this groove um, on the other side, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our browser over here, and you can see this mirror option. I want you to pick that up and drag it below Revolution 1. Okay, and that just changes the order of events in what's happening in our design. Okay, with Mirror 1 now down below Revolution, I want you to right click and choose Edit Feature. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on just thinking about that for a moment. Click on features up here, so click on that little arrow, and I want you to select that groove. Okay, it's highlighted blue now. Okay, if you can't select it over here in your wheel, you could click on Revolution 1. I think that would still do it. Alright, click on OK. And from here, we should be able to swing it around now. And we've got the groove on both sides of our wheel. It's looking pretty good. The very, oh, actually, the second last thing we're going to do, you don't have to do this, but up here where it says, mine says part eight, who knows what it's called in yours, could be called part one, part two, whatever. I want you to right click on it and go to eye properties. From eye properties, go up to the physical tab and you can change the material that this wheel is made out of. For this tutorial's sake, we're going to make it out of aluminium. Just choose the first aluminium option. Click Apply and close that box off. That applies an aluminium um, feature to our wheel. Alrighty. If you would like to change the colour of your wheel, okay, as I had in my example, mine was hot pink, feel free to go up to the Appearance panel here and find some colours that interest you. Okay, I'm going to go for that hot pink. It's called magenta. So click and drag over the top of your wheel. Hover over the top of magenta and press the up arrow to apply it to your wheel. Close the appearance panel and there's your wheel all drawn. Save that up and I'll see you in the next video.